Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the rumpled one. It is Thursday, March the 22nd, the year 2018. Let's talk trading statistics. A trader wanted me to go over the rat zone statistics and the buy zone statistics. You may have seen their comment. So let's, let's do that. First, we will look at the high minus open and open minus low frequency distribution for the uh, pound dollar over the last 100 days. Now, just so you know, this is high minus open. So here it's the high minus the open and then the low minus the open. In other words, how far did price travel from the open? So once again, the buy zone, we have the trigger set at between 8 and 10 pips from the open. So you can see right here, there are only four days, high minus the open was nine or less. And there was only 18 days where the open minus the low was nine pips or less. So this is over the last 100 days, about what, five months of trading? So you can see there is definitely an edge here. I mean, it should be very, very, very obvious. Because even here, even if you wanted to say these were losers, well, that's only 26% of the time. Well, that means, what, 74% of the time you win, but it's higher because we set the trigger at 10. So basically, going short at the open, according to this, you could have won, what, 82 days out of 100? And here you would have won 96 days out of 100? I mean, even, let's just say you only went for 10 pips. Or five pips. I mean, there it is right there. And you see, this is a pure, this is for the buy zone. Now, let's look at the other frequency distribution. High minus close and close minus low. So in other words, we take, let's look at this candle here. Let's make these candles fatter. You take the high minus the close, how many pips? You take the low, you minus the close, how many pips? Well, once again, this is rat zone. And so we put the rat zone at 20. So here you can see 8 and 8, 16. So out of the last 100 days, 16 times the close didn't come out of the rat zone. And here, 24 times, the close didn't come out of the red rat zone. So once again, you've got very high statistical edge, much higher than the casinos. And that's all you have to do is trade it. So let's see, just so you guys know what indicators, okay, this is 2013. And the other one, well, it's 2016, it says right there. So those are the two, um, but I believe in the 2017, I think you can do the frequency distribution. You can pick and choose which ones, if I remember correctly. So let's get back to it. Money management, risk management. Yeah, if you're trading the buy zone, you're trading the rat zone, you have to have your stops in place because you don't want things to get out of hand. It's just that simple. This is part of what you can control. You can control your position size and you can control your stop loss, which means you control your risk. And then that way you can put things in your favor. Look at Dollar Canadian. Look how far down it went. And we still have three that haven't filled the weekly gap. And you can see there's some really nice movement off of that weekly open. 
once again, anybody who took that short trade there, it definitely paid off. You look at the daily right here, there was a nice short, nice short there. Got some nice range on the euro pairs and the pound pairs. Very nice range today. You can see here we just about have a doji happening. We're only three pips off that daily open. And here we're looking at the buy zone again. You can see here in the New York, a nice up and a nice down. Oh, so what was it? Harry Hindsight? <laughs> oh, God, that's so funny. Because you see, this trade hasn't changed in decades. I mean, we can even put up, let, since we got, I, I showed you the pound because somebody asked about the pound. Well, you know, here you go. You had your buy zone trigger. And if you stayed in that trade, I mean, there was the potential there. Here you had your short zone trigger. And, and there once again. I mean, of course, you know, yeah, that's hindsight. Yeah, that happened before. But the thing is, these lines stay the same. Once this, once this daily open prints, the lines stay the same. So it doesn't matter if I talk about it here, if I talk about it here, if I talk about it now. These trades were there to, to, to happen. I mean, it's just that simple. Harry hindsight and the rat zone. Once again, we can uh, look over at the pound. And there you go. It put in a high. It put in a low. You see here, that just happened a few hours ago. It put in that low. You could take the rat trade for, once again, making pips. Yes. And once again, that's Harry hindsight. But, you know, it happens every day. You know, you can, you know, this indicator here. The uh, TRO rat zone, you can download that, you know, no charge, free, no donation required. I, I think I put this out in the early 2000s. You know, I've, I've updated it with all kind of triggers and, and different things to help you. You can turn the training wheels on so it tells you which way to trade. Um, and so see here, everything was short right there. There was a trade. Yeah, that happened you know, a couple hours ago, Harry hindsight. But if you have the indicator, you can be right there. You can be what? If it's Harry hindsight, I guess you can be Marty in the moment. <laughs> oh, people crack me up. Okay, here we go. And there's the pivot. As you can see, Dollar Canadian has tried, but didn't quite make the pivot. But even if you faded the pivot, um, there was a chance here if you took that open cross a couple times. You got within that central pivot range here. And price action, you know, there was your three ball. And that was a big indicator. There was your two ball. Once again, if we look, if we just trade price action at the line, and of course, that's old Harry hindsight, but, you know, right here, it's already crossed it once, so you don't want to push your luck. But next hour, actually this hour here, if it hit, comes up to 29.10, you can try it. You can try for a long. I really, <laughs> Harry hindsight. Oh, that's too funny. I don't know why it keeps doing that. Okay, five lines. As you can see, price is... It's been crisscrossing across the daily low and the previous day's low, previous day's close right there, formed a little zone. And you can see those are the two line crosses today. And you can see here monthly open up 75, weekly open down 191. Lots of movement there. And the wick zone, once again, we know the wick zones. These lines don't move because it's based on yesterday's data. And you can see price, as always, doesn't like staying in the wick zone. And we had a holo set up right there, put in a highest open, and then came down through it.
pips to be had. It happens every day. I mean, has there been a day that hasn't happened since I've been showing these videos, even before I started making these videos? And once again, we just have the tick chart. But let's just go back here. Um, just I want to make sure everybody truly understands here. You know. So let's pick this candle. There's the high. There's the close. There's the open. There's the low on the green candle. Then on the red candle, you've got the high. You've got the open. You've got the close. And you've got the low. And so all we're doing is we're looking at, we're just measuring, in this case, from the high to the open, and from the open to the low. Because we want to see how far price traveled away from the open. So in this case, probably went down first, then went up. In this case, probably went up first, then it went down. Okay, so that's what we're looking at here in this frequency distribution. How many times over the last 100 days was the open minus the low 0 to 9, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, etc.? Because this is the opportunity when you're trading the buy zone. Okay. Now let's look here. High minus close, close minus low. So let's look at this candle. We've got the high. We're going to subtract the close from it. We've got the low. We're going to subtract the close from it. Or actually, we're going to subtract the low from the close. We're going to measure those two distances. Why? Because we're looking to get in the trade somewhere with within 20 pips of the high and 20 pips of the low. Why? Because we can see here how many times these distances are between 0 and 9, 10 and 19, 20, 29, etc. So you can see right here close minus the low is 20 or less or 19 or less only 16 times so for example you look here at this you know bare candle so it pushed down here and then it came back okay so let's see let's do that nice little trick here you can see that's about oh what 42 pips so if you got in somewhere between 19 and 0, you subtract that from 42, that gives you about, what, 22 pips you could have possibly made there? Now, somebody always says, well, how do you know when it's the high? Because the day is still, you know, it could make go higher. Yes, it could, but that's trading. You're going you're gonna to take that chance. You're going to take that trade. Could it go higher? Sure, this could push up higher, and then it'll reverse back out. Or maybe it'll just push and stay up there. We don't know, because if we did, there'd be no market. I'd own it all, because I would have never told you about this. But you see, this is how you can use statistics to aid you in trading. So you can, you know, you can just trade the, the rat zone. Or if you want, if you prefer, you can just trade the buy zone. Either way, you can make money. You can make money trading away from the open, or you can trade money trading towards the open. Your pick. But just remember, traders, it's not what you trade. It's how you trade it. The Rumpled One signing off to drain the banks.